Welcome to part two of the Ham International Jumbo restoration and modification videos. In part one, we got the radio working and did some essential work on it. And in part two, we'll be doing even more essential work, replacing the speaker, changing the VCO out, taking the EEPROM out and restoring it back to as, as factory as we can get it before we start modifications. So on with the video. So the eagle-eyed people out there may have noticed in the last episode that the main speaker was not the correct one. And sure enough, it's far too big, way too big to be in this position. And when it's actually inserted into the radio, the speaker is actually catching onto the frame, which will obviously do no good for the sound reproduction. Plus it's a car speaker, plus it looks absolutely rubbish. Plus it shouldn't be in there, so it's not, not staying in there. So the job was to try and find a speaker that fits, and this one just about fits. And the um, holes just about line up. We had to cut away the three little tiny lugs. But the screw holes fit. I know it's a clear speaker, but it's the only one that was that I could find that would fit and had these mounting lugs. But we won't see that when it's inside the radio, but we'll know that the speaker is correct and it's not catching and it won't impede the sound quality in any way. So next thing is we want to reconnect the speaker back up to the extension speaker socket that was taped up and left inside the radio. And we'll put that back on the rear case. So there's a the speaker mounted, looking good, just about fits. I'm happy with that. So the next job we've got to tackle is removing this EEPROM. And I say, why remove the EEPROM? Well, I've got plans for this. So unfortunately, this EEPROM needs to come out. We're going to try and put this radio back to as standard as can be. And then do some work on it. So there's the PLL side removed. Now we've just got to try and recreate all the wires. So I've disconnected the wires from the channel selector. Luckily they've left those as they should be. But as you can see, they're no longer connected to the board. So we're going to have to figure out and put these back correctly. Now luckily, a good friend of mine gave me a little um, bit of information and it wasn't too hard to figure out which wire went to which post on the board. So after a few minutes that was put back in now I believe this was some sort of nasty FM audio modification and this is some sort of offset modification I don't know what that was supposed to be but that's definitely not staying in there so we've removed that um, a couple of uh, traces that have been cut that will be sorted out we've put a new um, earth link earth strap across the center because it didn't have one and you may notice there's an older style spectrum vco in there we're going to put the new style spectrum vco in there well this is actually a vco 27a so it should have the extended coverage so that's going to be going into place right now let's see if these repairs are now working so 26965 it's looking good 27405 also looking good okay let's see if we can receive anything now this is in its unaligned state so frequencies off and all sorts all sorts were off on this but it's a gradual process in bringing it back to factory and then going for the modifications. So one modification that was mentioned to me was the RF bias mod. So we're changing the resistor to 15 ohm. Then what we need to do, sideband, no TX audio and adjust the control for 0.7 of a volt on the base, which we have. So the next modification that was mentioned is to remove the VCO adjustments so it re requires removing the red 
and orange wire and linking them out on the board as such and of course we've replaced the tank of 10 microfarad capacitor which goes on the back of the VCO so that's freed up some contacts on our band selector next thing we're just having a look at is the um, the envelope produced by the two-tone generator on sideband and it's not too far out it does need a little bit more of a adjustment but it's it could have been a lot worse now on this radio the actual band select is a three position switch and there are switches available but unfortunately the shaft being 20 millimeters long is very hard to find so somebody said to me oh you can modify these switches so I had a go with a spare switch so I took the switch apart and the rotary plate hits an end stop but you can actually with the bit of careful maneuvering pull this plate off and don't lose the ball bearings underneath and change the position of the plate into the larger gap instead of the smaller gap which was three position now this gap gives you five positions but I want six so what I did is I put this disc in a vise and filed it down a little bit until it gave us the sixth position why six positions well I've got plans for this now this was a spare control so I've not actually damaged the one or should we say modified the one that was in the radio this was just a test but it does work so for this to work we have to have all the three commons together and we need to change the position of the wipers inside as well because there was three wipers and we changed that down to two wipers and this gives us the six positions now all you ham jumbo aficionados out there will go well you need two sets of two sets of switches for this jumbo because one set switches the crystals the other set switches the capacitors to tune the crystals well yes you're absolutely correct but I have a plan for that so at the moment all I need is a six position switch and I've got a plan to do something that should control this but anyway thanks for watching and in the next part we're going to be looking at the FM audio modification and some more alignment hopefully and then fingers crossed we can start modifying this for the extra channels so thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode